More than that, though, Tom has vision and energy, thanks in no small part to his love for Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> and, we'll, and, and he will share some of his vision with us this morning. So please join me in welcoming to uh, Address Meds Management 2022 SHPA President Tom Simpson. kind words. I've spent a professional lifetime looking up to Peter for his unrivaled... <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, I meant that metaphorically. <laughs> a professional lifetime looking up to Peter for his unrivaled clinical knowledge, his wisdom, his commitments to the pharmacy profession. We bonded over a shared love of first principles teaching in pharmacy, our love of South Australian red wines, uh, and our knowledge of Monty Python. <laughs> when Peter phoned me in 2018 to tell me he was nominating for president uh, and would the workplace support him, uh, the answer was an immediate yes, because I knew that Peter had no other way than to put his heart and soul into the role and would be unwavering in driving SHPA forward, because Peter, is Peter, and that's exactly what happened. Of course, uh, heading into 2019, the world was a very different place. Uh, just as a reminder of how far we've come, at our last conference, none of us had ever heard of Microsoft Teams. <laughs> I now feel like the old guy explaining to kids what life was like before TV and to help a telephone. And then 2020 gave us not just the blessing and the curse that is Microsoft Teams, but a global pandemic greatest public health challenge of the 21st century. As a long-time member, like most of you, I have looked to SHPA to connect me with my colleagues and with pharmacy practice across the country, as we've had to adapt our services and ourselves to deal with the crisis. The fact that SHPA has continued its strength of membership during this time is testament to the value of the connection that it provides. And despite the turmoil going on in our world, SHPA has felt like a beacon of stability. That's not to say it has been standing still, far from it. SHPA emerges from this period stronger and more assured as a result of your leadership. You also helped define the character of the SHPA member who is committed to evidence-based practice on their professional journey, supported by innovative programs and national networks of like-minded pharmacists. I think this defines who we are as an organisation. We are unique in Australia, representing the leading edge of pharmacy through our specialty of expertise. So on behalf of a grateful membership, I thank you, Peter, and the board of directors for being a strong and steady hand at the wheel during very challenging times as a profession and as a professional family. I think uh, that one of the things MM2022 will be remembered as uh, is a big family reunion. Uh, like any reunion, we have uh, old photographs to pour over. Uh, like uh, <laughs> Duncan in uh, 2007. His hair. Uh, before he started working with me and uh, had to tear his hair out. <laughs> I can't read what he's saying. Um, <laughs> but unlike a reunion, we're not here to remain in the past. There is so much to get excited about and to look forward to. I think the theme of the SHPA 2022 annual report released last night meets the moment we are in. So I want to talk this morning about new frontiers. We stand at an inflection point in Australian pharmacy and the boundaries of our profession are shifting. Contemporary healthcare is increasingly complex, specialised and integrated and I believe pharmacy is defined by these characteristics. A pharmacist prescribing is a particular flashpoint. It's all over the news and it's provoking a lot of discussion and also some disappointing interdisciplinary commentary. 
But let's also remember that for the last decade, the new frontier of pharmacists prescribing in Australia has been in the acute care setting. A key example, Partnered Pharmacist Medication Charting, or PPMC, is a mature collaborative model now embedded into practice across five states and territories. It is one of SHPO's primary recommendations to improve medication safety and is sure to continue to expand and grow. In stark contrast to some of the Twitter commentary on pharmacist prescribing, PPMC has been met with collegial accord and even acclaim from other disciplines. It is a collaborative approach where both pharmacists and doctors bring their individual expertise to bear on more safer, more effective medication management. Everyone in this equation benefits, particularly patients. SHPA will continue to advocate for the associated changes to state and territory legislation in 2023 and beyond. Beyond the four walls of the hospital, with community pharmacy prescribing trials picking up pace, I believe we need to return to some core principles. <clears throat> I believe our frontiers are not what's ahead of us when restricting our view just to the current lane, but what is possible when our experience and expertise helps advance the wider pharmacy freeway. There are two key points here, education and training and knowledge networks. To meet the task of complex, interconnected care, we need to build, train and inspire pharmacists and technicians ready for that future. Hospital-based or hospital-informed training creates practitioners whose native habitat is multidisciplinary, collaborative care, surrounded by specialists and generalists from all healthcare professions. Entrenched nationwide over the last five years, SHPA residencies provide the generalist and specialist knowledge to excel in emerging on-site roles, particularly in aged care and GP practices. They also ensure greater pharmacist coverage and medicine safety in regional, rural and remote areas, an ever-present concern in our vast country. Secondly, knowledge networks. And there is none more impressive in Australia than SHPA's specialty practice. I encourage you all to look through our five-year report, which details the amazing influence and impact of our 31 specialty streams. This ecosystem of excellence has now informed 116 advocacy and policy submissions, 65 practice in focus updates, and driven the revision or development of 14 standards of practice. This influence and impact works two ways. Across pharmacy, ensuring no individual is practicing in isolation, wherever they're based, and between professions. By building broader understanding of complex clinical care journeys and formally recognizing the underpinning skills and experience, we can work toward a future in which we are defined more by what we can do and by the care we provide than by where we work. In this way, the advances made to ensure medicine's safety and optimal outcome for patients who have acute care touch points can ripple outward to benefit those who don't. An example of how SHPA is expanding knowledge networks where they're needed most is our newest conference offering, PharmCare 2023. SHPA's new PharmCare conference is about improving communications, connections and care centralising the patient experience through the practice of accredited pharmacists, on-site aged care pharmacists and GP pharmacists. Uh, now, I'm kind of biased, but Hobart is definitely the most beautiful city in Australia and has mm. superior weather to Brisbane. Uh, <laughs> a few days a year. Uh, and I invite you to join us for the two and a half day program next March, which will include key clinical updates, focused skills development, a sweeping state of the nation and plentiful moments to network, connect and enjoy the sights and tastes of the region. So, on the very strong foundations of our recent past, where we go over the next few years will be even more important as we work to embed our leading programs and frameworks into the future of our profession. The ability to combine SHPA's online CPD offerings with workplace-based residencies will unlock new models for practitioner development. And the investments that SHPA has made into specialty practice will continue to bear fruit as pharmacists are increasingly recognised for their detailed knowledge of medicines in a range of specialist fields of practice. 
A third point is one that's really important to me, and, I, and I've already heard a lot about this already here in Brisbane. And that is that we must make sure that as more is asked of us as pharmacists and technicians, we retain our capacity to practice in a manner that is safe for both patient and practitioner. We know from the last decade that asking our clinicians to do more with the same or less resources is simply not sustainable. It sounds so simple, but in the web of competing agendas in Canberra and across all jurisdictions, we have to remain clear-eyed, and SHPA will continue fighting this fight. I have learned in my career the importance of shared understanding and respect, and I want to move now to a quick interactive segment because uh, who doesn't love a survey? Uh, and this one is even more meaningful than when you ask BuzzFeed how far you've made it in Squid Game, uh, and it's much, much safer. On the screen is a code which you can scan and then revisit at morning tea. This is a momentous time for SHPA, on, and on behalf of the board, I encourage you to complete our short values survey, which members will also receive next week via email. As a board, we want to lead from the front, but walk in step with you, our members. The Values Survey is part of our efforts to understand what is important to you today as we look toward our next strategic plan. It is now my honour and pleasure to continue in the spirit of reflection and celebration as we induct our new SHPA Fellows for 2022. Since 1966, SHPA Fellowship has been awarded to members of the Society who have demonstrated a high level of postgraduate academic achievement in areas relevant to pharmacy practice who have demonstrated an active commitment to SHPA in the profession, and who are recognised as leaders of the profession whose opinions are valued, recognised and sought. I would like now to invite Kristen and Peter to assist with the presentation.